So let's kick this off. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, gzip and other CSS and JavaScript tweaks, CSS being style sheets for the uninformed. Um, I want to start with gzip because it's typically one of the easiest things to cross off the list. A lot of times your web host will already have that available or even turned on, like if you're using WP Engine or probably Kinsta, Flywheel, all the big ones, all the managed hosts should have that enabled by default. But if your host doesn't, just ask them and they can help you out with that. Um, another easy, simple way to do that is just install WP Rocket. Oh shoot, you don't have to do anything, just turn on the plugin. There is also a WordPress plugin that will do just, you know, turn on the gzip compression for you. But usually, you ask your web host and they can walk you through it. Um, but of course, this article also has the server-based uh, rules for doing that, and so you can check that out. Um, another new type of compression, so this is basically making those resources smaller, the JavaScript, the CSS, a lot of times, especially me, I talk about images, 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 and you got to compress them, you got to make them smaller. But your JavaScript and CSS can take up a lot of space, so you want to make sure they're as small as possible. And gzip and Brotly are two of the compression algorithms that can take care of that for you. And so Brotly is a newer one. It's really similar to, to gzip, um, but it uses um, a browser-based, basically a shared dictionary of words and phrases and code snippets and tidbits that it can comb through uh, to, to make the files even smaller than gzip. Um, but either one is pretty good. You're gonna win no matter which way you go. So just pick one, whatever's available and go with it. Our easy op image optimizer has Brotly enabled by default, it used to use gzip and then we switched to a new system that has Brotly, yay. So, but they're both uh, really great for compression talked about gzip and Brotly. Uh, the next thing is kind of like compression and that's minifying your JavaScript and your CSS. Minifying your files. So the at the basic level it's going to strip out all the white space in your CSS. So as just a quick example um, let me show you real quick. So this is an example of all the white space stripped out. There's no line breaks, there's no extra spacing, no nothing. And for JavaScript, um, the minifiers will also go in and look for things in the code that can be a little more efficient. Um, in some cases, you don't need the trailing uh, semicolon or you know things like that. And so they'll strip out the white space and then look for any other ways to make your code smaller, more efficient. And so then that ties in with the compression and they are kind of a one-two punch and just really, um, really make that those resources smaller. A really good plugin for that, um, WP Rocket of course works. Um, if you use our easy image optimizer, it auto minifies everything for you. Um, ideally your your theme and your plugin authors should already be doing that so if they're not get in touch with the developer and say hey can you minify your scripts can you minify your css um, but otherwise these other systems can take care of it for you auto optimize is one i've used for a long time um, and it'll minify things just great um, so minify combine javascript and css so this is taking um, like we saw over here, we got all these different CSS files and with JavaScript, we've got all these different JavaScript files. So there's a lot of scripts, a lot of CSS files um, that can be coming in here. This site has 35 and it's just running a, the stock 2020 uh, WordPress theme. So that's kind of crazy and a couple plugins. So combining will will put those all together, take all your CSS, put it into one file, take all your JavaScript, put it into one file. And that was awesome like five, 10 years ago. Um, since then, something called HTTP version two 
was released but released more than 10 years ago but it's really become more mainstream and more common in recent years and one of the biggest things it does is it allows parallel requests so if you've put all of your javascript in one file you don't get to benefit from parallel requests all your stuff is loading at once in one big file and it might take a little while to load but with HTTP2, you leave all your stuff one by one and it sucks it all in, all these little tiny files really fast and they're all done in parallel. So as long as your web host supports HTTP2, don't combine your scripts, don't combine your, your CSS. Um, and if your web host doesn't support HTTP2, find a new web host because that's bad, very bad every web host should support that by now. Um, but one of the things you can do if you don't want to switch web hosts um, is to use a CDN or use, use something like our uh, Easy Image Optimizer or WP Rockets CDN deal. Any of the CDNs will enable HTTP2 for you and it's just a, a nice performance boost to be able to load everything in parallel instead of one by one by one by one. So, or one massive file and wait for it to load. So, next thing, we've compressed all our stuff, we've stripped out all the white space, we're not gonna combine it because we want it loading in parallel. Next, we want to defer certain resources. Now, why in the world do we defer stuff? Don't we just want it to load all as fast as possible? Well, yes and no. Certain things do need to load fast, a lot of stuff, not so much. Um, you'll see this from Google, and the problem, especially with scripts, um, but also with style sheets to some extent, is that when the browser gets to a certain spot in the page, it will find your script, it'll find your style sheet, and go, oh, hey, we have a file to load, and it will go out and load it. It will stop everything it's doing and go get that file. And so you're waiting on all these files, especially you got 35 of them like we had on that site. It's having to wait 35 times to go out and fetch those files when it could have been just parsing the page and rendering it. Um, so you want to try and remove all that render blocking stuff so that the page can be displayed as fast as possible. Uh, there's several ways to do that. There's a um, plugin from the same guy that, that makes uh, auto-optimize called async JavaScript and it's a great way, free way to defer all the JavaScript on your page and make it not render blocking. Um, if you use that plugin, I recommend you go with defer instead of async. The difference, the biggest difference is that defer preserves the order of the scripts. So some scripts are gonna depend on other scripts and if you change the order and the one that's a kind of the child in the dependency tree gets loaded first and it doesn't have its parent, it starts crying and whining and it breaks horribly. So you want to try and keep the orders as in order as possible, however you want to say that, and uh, defer lets you do that. And then it will you know, load those JavaScript files without blocking uh, the page. There's a method for CSS that I'm going to be looking into. So look for that in a future blog post or video. Um, that's something I haven't looked into a lot, but I did find um, some resources from uh, Web Dev, which is uh, one of Google's uh, pages or blogs that you can look at. And uh, they talk about deferring JavaScript on this page somewhere. They also talk about finding unused CSS, which is really cool. So here's the, the method they use for deferring, and you can look more at that. Um, I'm gonna be looking more into that and probably implementing that on my site. So that's pretty cool. Um, and of course, WP Rocket will also do a lot of that for you. Um, it does uh, the deferring and it will optimize your CSS loading and then lastly, the 
almost worst thing you could do, but not always, is to inline all CSS. So do all that other stuff, except for combining. Remember, we want stuff parallel, not all one, one huge load for the browser. Um, but inlining all CSS can be helpful, but it's usually not. Um, I'm going to show you the guy who recommends this and why he recommends this. If you search for inline all CSS, this is the first result. <clears throat> and he, of course, does suggest it, but look at his page. It's super simple. There's no CSS here, hardly at all. So if you have stripped down, if you're an awesome CSS guy, front end developer, and you strip down your theme to under 14 kilobytes of CSS, by all means, inline it. But for the rest of us average Joes or even above average Joes, inlining is a huge performance hit. First of all, it gets rid of that parallel stuff we just talked about. And secondly, it eliminates browser caching. So when you load a page and then you want people to you know, visit more than one page on your site, so they click on a second page and a third page, hopefully, then they have to load all that CSS all over again if you inline it. But if you leave it separate, you get parallel requests plus the br their browser will cache those files and they only have to load them one time. So it can reduce the, your page size as well, which is always a good thing. Always, always make your files smaller and that's great. So compress your files, strip all the white space and extra junk, defer JavaScript, defer your CSS and never ever inline all CSS unless you're an awesome front end developer that uses barely any CSS. So those are my tips and tricks for optimizing JavaScript and style sheets. Hope you love them.